grading psychology students. So as is the case with LTP, when we look at LTD, we need to be mindful of the overarching principle of synaptic plasticity, the brain's ability to change as a result of everyday experience. And specifically, we're talking synaptically, but also within the structure of the cells themselves. So let's break down the meaning of the terminology here, long-term depression, because it's got nothing to do with the mood disorder that depression is synonymous with. So when we look at the word depression in this context, we're talking about weakening or lowering in strength. And then we link it to long term. And so what's happening here is we're getting a weakening of the strength of a synaptic pathway that once was responsible for a memory that is occurring over time. So as is the case with LTP, there's three points of emphasis with our definition of LTD. Number one, it's relatively permanent. Number two, there's a weakening of the synaptic pathways. And number three, it re it's a result of repetition. Repetition of low level activation of the neural pathway responsible for a memory trace. Now, this is a complex process. So if we look at this, these graphs on the right of this slide, what we have on the right here is the AP threshold, action potential threshold. Now, what's happening with the LTP process is due to the weak level of input from the presynaptic cell, the activation of the postsynaptic cell is not hitting that AP threshold. The signal is too weak. And because of that, the pathway is weakening over time. So let's have a go at explaining this in another way. So we've got the presynaptic cell on the left. That's where the input comes from. We've got the postsynaptic cell on the right receiving the input. In order for that postsynaptic fire, we need to have an adequate level of input presynaptically. So over time, the input from the presynaptic cell gets weaker and weaker. There's less glutamate being released. And over time, the postsynaptic cell becomes less receptive. And so therefore, the cell will not fire, the postsynaptic cell that is and that weakens the neural connection between those two cells. Now, structurally, there's a couple of other things going on. If we look at the receptor sites on an individual dend dendritic spine, we can see here that uh, on the bottom of this diagram, pre-LTD, we've got a bunch of receptors that receive that glutamide based on a lock and key fashion. And through the LTD process that we can input, we get a reduction in the number of receptors on that postsynaptic cell. So we've got less locks, which are the receptors. And we've also got, if we look on the right here, we've got less keys. So less neurotransmitters being released presynaptically, less locks in terms of the receptors receiving that reduced inflow. Pruning is also a byproduct of the LTD mechanism because we prune off parts of the actual pre and postsynaptic cells. So we get a bit of pruning of the dendritic branches that were involved in the neural pathway. On the presynaptic end, we're also pruning off some of the axonal appendages. And so therefore we're pruning off the synaptic connections um, that were responsible for the neural pathway. But it's important to emphasize that LTD is a regulatory process because what it enhances is efficiency in terms of synaptic plasticity. 
it enhances the LTP process for modifying our learning. So looking at the example here of the tennis player, they were playing with a one-handed backhand, and now the coach is forcing them to switch to a two-hander. And so this is going to require hours and hours of practice, hours and hours of repetition to literally rewire the brain so that when that ball is flying over the net on the backhand side of that player, LTD will enable that the brain pathways in the motor areas that are responsible for the one-handed um, shot to weaken over time so that LTP can occur and modify the um, brain pathways responsible for a two-handed shot so that we can basically enhance that skill. So LTD is a regulatory process that enables us to kind of unlearn that old redundant one-handed backhand as the ball approaches so that we can modify, rewire the brain synaptically so that we can master the two-handed backhand. 